Hello everyone and welcome back to the Gibraltar Masters 2020. It's uh, one of the candidates of the 2020 candidates tournament, uh, Van Hao versus 21 year old Russian Grandmaster David Paravian. And uh, after 10 rounds, uh, there's a, uh, well, seven people tied for, for first place, but only uh, four players uh, go into tie breaks. Uh, meaning that uh, Maxim Vashiel Lagrave almost, uh, almost uh, made it. Uh, he's fifth on the tie breaks and he doesn't get to go in, into the playoffs. So uh, who, people who go into the playoffs are uh, David Paravin, as you have him here, with the black pieces, Van Hao, Daniel Yufa, uh, and uh, Andrei Esipenko, who's been leading the tournament for, for pretty much uh, the entire tournament. However, uh, both Yufa and Esipenko have been eliminated uh, by Van Hao and David Paravin, and now uh, this is uh, the finals uh, of the playoffs, Van Hao versus David Paravin. This is game one of the playoffs, uh, and it's uh, it's really it's really enjoyable. Uh, let's check it out. So Van Hao opens with e4. Uh, we have e5, knight to f3, knight to c6. Sorry about that. Uh, and bishop to b5. The Ruy Lopez is on the board, and the knight to f6. We have uh, the uh, the Berlin defense. We have d3 and the bishop to c5. Uh, bishop captures on c6. We have d captures on c6. So uh, all standard stuff. We have castles and the knight to d7. Uh, making room for f6 so you can further strengthen your pawn here. We have c3 and the now black castles. We have d4. Uh, there is one game where uh, Nakamura captured e captures on d4 against Anand that ended in a draw. But uh, nowadays uh, bishop to d6 is the preferred move. Uh, bishop to g5 attacking the queen uh, with f6 pushing the bishop back and now bishop back to h4. Uh, also there is a game uh, Pavel Elyanov versus uh, Timur Rajabov where queen to b3 was played and Elyanov uh, uh, was able to beat Rajabov. Uh, but uh, bishop to h4 here and now uh, there uh, is uh, we, we already seen this variation uh, not not so long ago when we covered uh, Alireza Firuja versus Jeffrey Xiong, uh, their, uh, th this position has been reached where Queen to e8 was played by Xiong uh, and Firuja was able to win that game. But Queen to e8 was also played by Firuja by Dmitry Andrekin in the World Blitz Championship and Firuja also uh, won that game. So uh, although Queen to e8, one of the engine's favorites, uh, in practical play doesn't uh, yield all all. Uh, well, uh, too great of a result. Uh, however, here we have c5, and c5 is a new move. Uh, it's never been played before, so as of move 10, we have a completely new game, and it's um, definitely unpleasant for Wang Hao to face uh, face such a novelty uh, in a 10-minute game. I forgot to mention these are 10-minute rapid games. Uh, so what uh, what happens now? Uh, okay, bishop to g3. Now putting pressure uh, on the e5 pawn, we have queen to e7, and now. Uh, if you allow captures, then the e4 pawn will be vulnerable, so d captures on e5. With f captures on e5, nicely opening up uh, the file the file for the rook. And knight b to d2, with ideas of going to uh, perhaps c4, so black prevents that. With knight to b6, uh, and now queen to e2. Continuing development, with bishop to g4 by Paravian. Now making it a bit hard for, for white to unpin here with h3, bishop to h5, and now rook f to e1. Uh, just uh, continuing to, to, to put pieces on, uh, well, uh, as optimal squares as possible. We have king to h8, getting out of this diagonal as it's, uh, well, it, it's a, a 10 minute game. You don't want to constantly... Uh, 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 have to calculate uh, what happens if you if someone something checks you uh, in this game obviously the queen uh, queen e3 now unpinning and h6 now taking away the g5 square from white's pieces and now knight to h4 here Van Hao uh, wants to bring his knight over to, to f5 and then maybe in the future ideas like knight captures on h6 uh, are possible we have queen to f6 now uh, so the the knight doesn't come with an attack on the queen and now just knight to f5 we have bishop to g6 now preparing to capture the knight and win a pawn uh, and this is how van Hao, uh, uh, makes it impossible for, for the capture to appear on the board. Bishop to h4 attacks the queen, queen to e6, and now g4. So this pretty much cements the knight on f5. Uh, if you capture it, then just captures. This comes with an attack on the queen, and it could be very unpleasant. Knight is coming to e4, f6 is possible. The bishop nicely supports f6. Uh, and you will never never be able to capture because of queen captures on h6. So uh, you do not want to capture this. So instead, we have a5 preventing white from expanding further on the queen side. Uh, and now knight, knight to f3. 
uh, we have a4. If uh, if uh, white is allowed to play something like b b3 and c4, it will really uh, improve his position here. So uh, black uh, b black prevents this. We have a4, uh, and now comes rook a to d1, putting more pressure on the bishop. But also, it's the only open file on the board, so makes sense. Uh, but also, uh, it uh, allows black to capture the pawn on a2. Now it's a it's a 10 minute game. Uh, uh, Paravian already quite low on time. Uh, what what can he do here? Well, he decides to capture the pawn. He's not afraid of uh, any ideas. Uh, well, regarding knight, knight captures on h6. So this is what happens. Uh, he he uh, rises to the challenge. Uh, we have queen captures on a2, and now, uh, without much consideration, Van Gaal just captured on h6. Uh, point being that if the knight is accepted. Uh, it's uh, it's bad news. For example, captures captures with check. You have to block with the bishop, otherwise you lose the bishop as well. So bishop h7 and now bishop a f6 check. Uh, this forces uh, black to give up the rook because there's mate here. So captures captures again with check. King g8 and the knight g5, threatening check and mate. So you have to block rook f8 and now queen to h6. Again, threatening queen captures with uh, mate. So you have to give up the rook, rook f7, and now you give up the other rook as well. Knight captures, we have queen captures, and now uh, finally uh, you have two rooks for, for three minor pieces, which is of course winning, but even better, you have a nice tactic. Captures, uh, you recapture, check, doesn't really matter what you play, king h8, now queen check checks again, king g7, and you pick up the knight as well, and now it's just a, a rook against the bishop, uh, of course, uh, with uh, black's position completely busted. So uh, this is, uh, in fact, a good decision if black had to capture, but black doesn't have to capture. So feel free to pause the video and try to find the best refutation of the sacrifice while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations. Uh, unspotting rook captures on f3. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, that's exactly what Paravian played. Uh, grabbing the rook, which comes with an attack on the queen. You don't have an in-between move to save the knight. So queen captures, pawn captures, and now queen f6 with check. Uh, we have king to h7. And now uh, you have to, uh, you know, merrily continue attacking. Otherwise, uh, well, you, you just uh, sacrifice the piece. So rook captures on d6, c captures on d6, and queen captures on d6. So you, you grab some pawns. You are very likely to grab even more pawns. Uh, and now the knight is hanging. So what do you do here? Uh, we have rook to a6. This was played pretty much instantly by Paravian, uh, which defends the knight. And also after the knight moves, it will... Uh, defend the 6th rank uh, quite quite nicely. So queen captures on e5. Now grabbing a very important pawn. This creates uh, two connected pass pawns, the f pawn and the e pawn. And if those pawns start marching forward, it could be, could be pretty bad for black. So knight to d7, attacking the queen, also now freeing up the rook. We have queen to c7, attacking the knight, and the queen to f7 now, defending and bringing the queen back into the defense. And now the proper way to continue the attack is f4. f4, f5, e5, and you, you continue pushing as much as possible and as far as possible. Because like I said, it's a 10-minute rapid game. Uh, you sacrifice material, you're on the attack, you want to make stuff happen. But here, uh, Van Gaal actually goes rook to d1. He threatens the knight, uh, but that's not uh, that's not really a problem since the queen on f7 is defended. So here, just knight to f8. And again, you have two choices, trade queens or capture on c5. Now, uh, it's uh, pretty much uh, pointless to, to check what the engine says here. The engine prefers capturing the c-pawn, but not by much, only by a, by a small margin. But uh, if you're playing against a human and if you've sacrificed material, uh, black is very low on time, uh, his king's uh, position is pretty much busted, you want to keep the queens on the board. So queen captures on c5 uh, should be played definitely here. Uh, there's nothing forced here for white, of course. For example, if bishop captures, you can continue pushing f4. And now you, you can still start uh, pushing some pawns here. Because if queen captures, you get rook f1. And could be could be a bit unpleasant, for example. Uh, queen d6, you offer a queen trade. Uh, again, you can offer a queen trade. Uh, but uh, worst thing here, here you, you win back your piece. And now, after rook d2, 
uh, black will, will win back the pawn. It, it's mo most likely a draw. Uh, but still, a better practical decision than, than for example, trading queens here. Wang Hao, however, uh, decides to trade queens. Queen captures, bishop captures, and now f4. And now, okay, he does have these uh, four gentlemen here, and uh, if they start marching forward, it's going to be uh, very hard to stop them. Uh, but a3, uh, there's also that. So b captures an a3, rook captures, now attacking the pawn here, and bishop to f6, defending the pawn this way, and now uh, rook to a4. Not easy to find an active move for black, you have to do something against these pawns. And here... Uh, Wang Hao uh, was, I think he was around two minutes up on the clock and Paravion was already down to some 30 seconds. Uh, but uh, yeah, he did consider rook to d8. Rook to d8, uh, he calculated it a lot and he lost a lot of time. But the problem is it unwinds into a draw. Uh, and it seems that Wang Hao really wanted to win this game with white. Uh, point is that after uh, you attack the knight, uh, knight attacks rook, rook checks, king g6 and now bishop to e5. You have to give up this pawn, but after you give up this pawn, f5 check uh, wins the knight here. So, king g5, you will capture here, black captures here, and now after you move the bishop, you're going to win this pawn as well. And it's uh, pretty much pretty much a drawn endgame. Uh, the bishops are of opposite colors, and there's not much to do for, for either sides. Uh, but, seems like uh, Wang Hao did spend a lot of time here, so he must have calculated everything. He went rook to not there, obviously. Uh, he went rook to e1. He defended the pawn, and now he's preparing to push the pawn forward. Uh, we have knight to d7, uh, attacking the bishop. Bishop to e7, now putting pressure on the c5 pawn. And now rook to c4, going after the c3 pawn. And here, uh, e5 is a must. e5 uh, already comes with the threat of e6. This is, uh, this is how you play this. Wang Hao, on the other hand, played rook to e3, defended the pawn, and this gives black a val valuable tempo. Uh, b5 now, and b4 already will create a pass pawn. So still, uh, e5 is uh, is is the is the choice here, uh, but king f2. He starts bringing his king into the game. We have b4 by Paravian. C captures on b4. C captures and the king to f3 now. Uh, and okay, the king is now much more active, but your pawns still haven't started uh, going forward. Uh, so, and also, okay, the king now defends the f4 pawn, but uh, the, the rook wouldn't capture if there was the threat of just winning a piece. So, uh, uh, priorities. So, knight to c5, uh, now preparing to, to push the pass pawn. The b3 square is now protected, but now e5. But now e5 isn't all that strong because uh, the king is now on a light square, so bishop to uh, d5 check. King back to g3 and now b3. This square is nicely protected. We have rook to e2, but now rook to c2. Again, white cannot uh, afford afford a trade. Uh, we have rook to e1, but now pawn to b2. And here, you really don't have anything to play. Uh, rook to c1 is coming. So here, Wang Hao captured the knight uh, to put the rook behind the pass pawn, uh, in front of the pass pawn, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, as after rook to b5, the pawn is defended, and it was in this position that Wang Hao resigned the game, as there's no defense against the bishop to a2. So really, uh, a really weird game. Wang Hao made a made a beautiful uh, practical decision. He sacrificed the knight on h6, and he had the attack. The, the black king was wide open, and uh, if anything, he can just check him for for as long as he wants. But uh, something weird happened. Then then he started spending a lot of time. He traded queens, and he basically started playing this game as if uh, he didn't just sacrifice a piece. Which which uh, you know, if you do that, then then this will happen. Uh, and in the next game, he had the black pieces where he had to win on demand, but uh, he wasn't able to do so. And in the end, he uh, he got in into a, a, a well a worse position. And in that moment, uh, Paravian offered him a draw, which Wang Hao of course gladly accepted, as uh, uh, he didn't want to lose unnecessary rating points. And Paravian was very happy uh, clinching the, uh, the the victory in this um, uh, Gibraltar Masters 2020. So, uh, so I don't forget, here are the standings after 10 rounds. Uh, they aren't correct because here you can see that Andrei Sipenko is first. Uh, but these are the standings after uh, 10 rounds. The, uh, these standings do not include the, the playoffs. So it's actually uh, David Paravian first place, Wang Hao, one of the candidates in second place. And then as continues, Andrei Sipenko, Daniel Yufa. Uh, Maxim Vashielagrav uh, in uh, in fifth, uh, then David Navara, uh, Mustafa Yilmaz, Parham Maksudlu, 
Jan Verle, Veselin Topalov, Chopra Arjan, Mikhail Kovaila, Murli Kartakien, Michael Adams, Lequang Liam, Gawain Jones, Ivan Šarić. Ivan Šarić had a very promising position against Pragnananda. I think he was even winning. Uh, so he was very close to finishing, uh, f- uh, tying for first, but uh, Pragnananda, uh, you know, valiantly defended uh, a worse position for, for like 60 moves, and in the end, uh, Pragu uh, managed a draw. Uh, and uh, then Krishnan Sasikran in 18th, uh, Jul Musart, uh, Pragnananda in 20th, uh, Bogdan Daniel uh, uh, Deats, uh, then uh, Tan Jonggi, Daniel Vokaturo, Fernando Peralta, and Ivan Ceparinov. Those are the, 20, uh, the first 25. Uh, so yeah, really exciting stuff and a really b- big achievement for uh, for a 21-year-old Russian Grandmaster David Paravian, not only winning the uh, Gibraltar 2020 Masters, but also eliminating Wang Hao in a, in a, in a match. That's that's not not a small thing. And prior to this, he had he had a good a good uh, tournament in uh, uh, the the Isle of Man. Uh, uh, Grand Swiss, where he where he finished in uh, tenth place, uh, almost a 2800 performance. So uh, things are things are definitely looking up uh, for him. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. Ended this very short coverage of the Gibraltar Masters. I will go uh, through your suggestions if there are any games uh, that are really worth showing. So I, I will definitely show them. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I also I prepared something for you, but uh, let me just check if I still have it. Um, yeah, here just something to improve your day. Here is a here is a nice photo uh, of uh, of Vasily Ivanchuk. I have to resize it a bit. Sorry about that. Forgot to, forgot to prepare this uh, before the video. And uh, Nikki's photos are just so so huge. Yeah, this this might take a while, but it it, it will be worth it. There there's no shortcuts here for the, <laughs> to make it faster. So sorry about that. Yeah, this is okay. This is really weird. Uh, I'll make sure not to not to let this happen for you know, another time, uh, but trust me, it's going to be good, it's going to be good, it's a, it, it's a, you know, a, a nice photo of Chucky is always, always worth it, there you have it, there, there he is, oh yeah, there it is, all right, so here it is, yeah, there we go, a nice photo of Chucky to, to brighten your day, uh, just with his, with his little cup of coffee, you know, obviously taking it with sugar as he, he does have his spoon there. So there you have it. Uh, also courtesy of Nikki Riga, official photographer of the, of the uh, Gibraltar Masters 2020. So let's just enjoy that for a few seconds and that's, that's it. Uh, so yeah, uh, I would like to thank uh, Michael Sklar, uh, Mateusz Relinger, and uh, Michael uh, uh, Skarpelos for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check to all my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon, uh, continuing the coverage of the Paul Morphy saga until the next uh, current event happens uh, in the chess world. So thank you all, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.